Hey guys, it's Danny. Alrighty, lately I had a few comments from you guys asking me what I think about DIY fertilizers. Um, this is a topic that I've seen some videos about but many years ago. If the trend has resurfaced, I'm not entirely sure, it might have. So I will tell you my opinion on DIY fertilizers. But before we start, I would just like to tell you that this is not a tutorial on how to feed your orchids using household products. I currently just believe the process is a little bit more complicated than what some sources make it seem, so this is not an endeavor that I want to take on. For the moment, I want to take on the challenge of actually obtaining uh, competition results with my orchids using normal fertilizers, but I would like to discuss about it because I don't think it's something you should completely avoid. Where there is a will, there is a way. Maybe it is possible, but at least I would like people to document why they use certain and stuff and come up with a solution that is complete, it's viable and it has long-term good results. Since we're on the topic of fertilizers, I would like to discuss about the urea in fertilizers topic as well, because apparently it's quite a controversial thing. But first off, let us start with fertilizers. So first off, the reason why I don't personally use do-it-yourself fertilizers, nor am I really inclined to follow a certain DIY fertilizer scheme, is because I simply believe it's incomplete. If we take a look at a fertilizer label, we can see all sorts of minerals, macro elements and micro elements that are added to that fertilizer. And actually, all of them have their purpose. If you take the time to research each component and how it can actually help a plant, what its role is, you'll discover that pretty much all of them have uses. Without some nutrients, photosynthesis is impossible because they form chlorophyll, such as nitrogen and magnesium. But other ingredients are just as important. Maybe they are not actively involved in photosynthesis, but they might be involved in cellular formation and structure. Also, they can regulate breathing. All of these things that those components do for an orchid result in a flourishing orchid, a strong orchid with a strong immune system that works normally and is utilizing its resources in an efficient way. So the question here is not whether we need to feed orchids, but how do we feed them? Now, the problem that I have with DIY fertilizers is that there is no way to measure or know the quantities of these substances in that particular DIY solution. As far as I read in the comments, the rice water thing is the most popular one. And I did a little bit of research, all I can see is that rice water can be used in various ways, including in beauty products, because it contains vitamins, minerals and uh, all sorts of beneficial things. Yes, but I am interested to know what minerals, in what quantities. They might be too little for orchids, they might be incomplete, and about that I am pretty pretty sure. Or they might actually be excessive, and that's not good either. And the problem with this incomplete scheme of fertilizer is that it has long-term effects. And especially with orchids, you will never see deficiencies overnight, not even after a year. Maybe after two years or so, you'll start to see the problems. And sometimes you might not even notice the problems, because many of us keep believing that we can never achieve with our orchids what nurseries achieve, which is totally not true. We absolutely can, because nurseries are not these extraterrestrial entities. They're not magicians. If they can do it, maybe we can do it as well, at least come close to it. So the fact that an orchid produces three blooms this year might not be because you don't have a greenhouse. And especially with the most common orchids that can tolerate a wide range of environments, chances are it has to do with the food. So actually, I personally don't have anything against DIY fertilizers. My only problem is that I just believe they are incomplete. I believe that people don't go deep enough into the subject. And even if some solutions do provide some things, they can totally forget other important nutrients. Rice water can indeed contain some minerals, maybe calcium, maybe nitrogen. But does it contain iron, boron or manganese? Well, these are questions that I have and until they are answered, I will consider DIY methods incomplete. Now, of course, rice water is not the only way to DIY a fertilizer. Using crushed eggshells does indeed provide some calcium. How much does it provide? Well, that's a little harder to measure. And I believe a DIY fertilizer should contain various sources of nourishment. And to do that, we first must think what 
product can give me what nutrient and then try to make a sort of combination. The problems will occur when certain combinations will not work because these chemicals or chemical substances need to be in a certain form because one they need to be available to the plant in that form nitrogen is not available in its pure form also the other substances might not be available in the form they might be contained by certain organic products so yet again there is a research that needs to be done also we need to make sure that these substances don't interact with each other and cancel themselves out or worse result in something quite toxic for the plants also we need to figure out a way to measure them and to put them in certain amounts to yield a certain ratio within a certain quantity of that resulted fertilizer and if I sound complicated sorry but I just find it to be a little complicated I don't think plant nutrition is an easy subject as it is particularly if we're not very well versed in chemistry or biology and so a simple solution as crushed eggshells and some rice water simply doesn't sound right to me and as I was saying the bad part is you will not see effects over night or after one year you'll see them in time and you'll also see them progressively you might observe them when it's already a little bit too late so bottom line I can see the appeal it sounds so easy let's use the rice water that we throw away it's beneficial or let's use the crushed eggshells that we throw away again it's a resource that it's available it's cheap I totally can see the appeal but I seriously doubt it will have sustainable long-term results or if it does have some results, I really don't think it's the full potential. And in this case, maybe it just depends on what you want and what your expectations might be. But as I was saying, simply because I find it too complicated and I would not put my time in investigating and experimenting with this doesn't mean you shouldn't either. If you are passionate about the subject, then by all means, you should do experiments, you should test out. But I don't think you should fall in the trap of just watching a video, somebody tells you something and you will take it as a fact. It's always good to investigate a little bit and I think the start for this experiment or this endeavor is to research what all of these components can do for an orchid and then start to research how they naturally occur in nature maybe you can mimic some phenomenons and for example in gardening this works very well with composting but we cannot really do compost in our home also our orchids are not terrestrial they're epiphytic and that poses some challenges but at least it's a startup and I think it's a better way to start investigating and researching searching because it will simply be the proper way not just reading an article in a magazine that says this is good for orchids then it must be true that rarely kind of works and in the end Sally you can end up with something you truly don't want such as bio load because apart from what orchids need you kind of need to think about the environment in which the orchids grow let's say they grow in your house things are pretty sterile in comparison to nature in comparison to a garden even so there are quite a few things to take into account but if you want to tackle the subject I think you definitely should Alrighty, now regarding the second part of the discussion, urea-based or urea-free fertilizers. And this is something I kind of had an opinion in the past as well, due to my experience with aquatic plants. So in the past, I did stand by my opinion that urea-containing fertilizers are not so good for orchids. And of course, this was supported by some other opinions or articles or even studies that linked certain diseases in Phalaenopsis to urea. However, late this subject has taken an unexpected turn. There are some sources which suggest that at least Phalaenopsis orchids can actually absorb urea as it is through their root system. And I will link you down below to such articles. Now, it's not something uncommon for scientists or people in the field to change their minds due to the research or experiments and so on. As far as I'm reading now, it is still pretty much a sensitive subject. The people responsible for these experiments cannot really agree. And also, they cannot agree that all orchids are capable of absorbing urea as it is. Sadly, though, yet again, we need to refer to long term, and in our case, maybe effects will be visible not after a year or two but maybe 10 so at this point I am a little bit 
in between. I guess I can see the logic behind orchids being able to absorb urea since they are epiphytic, they have limited resources, right? They might have adapted to absorb the first available nitrogen source, which is urea, maybe ammonia or ammonium actually as well. So I can see how that's plausible. Since the scientists don't yet agree, I don't have an opinion just yet, I am still in research mode, but I think I will actually test it out. I might actually go and get an all-purpose fertilizer, which I don't suggest you guys do. I just have faith in myself that I will not kill the orchid with it. Uh, use it at lower dosages, one that has a urea content. And maybe I can do a sort of a comparison with the other orchids that I have, probably. Oh yes, I see them in the distance. The Phalaenopsis are already eager to try out and to be part of this experiment. I'll probably feed the Phalaenopsis with that type of fertilizer some of them, while others with my MSU fertilizer, which contains a nitrate source of nitrogen, and see if there are actual visible results or see if the batch treated with the urea fertilizer is actually more susceptible to disease and other things. I think that is the next experiment that I will tackle. It's a long-term experiment, I suppose at least a year, but hopefully within a year the scientists will agree. Anyway, uh, I just wanted to let you guys know what I read. That's the latest trend when it comes to fertilizers. And If you want to research more, then you should definitely research more and let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. So alrighty guys, this has been the video for today. Now you know my thoughts on DIY fertilizers. Not for me, but it might be for you. And if you have the magical formulation, yeah, do share it with all of us. So if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. A share would be wonderful. And if you like to watch other videos from me, simply subscribe to my channel and don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. And with that said, I'll see you all next time. Bye! So do you remember the climber Paphio Petalum? I have this guy already for three years and he had that new growth right on top where a bud should have been. Well, it is producing what I think now is something else than a leaf. I'm not entirely sure. It does look like a bud, doesn't it? So fingers crossed it is a bud and also fingers crossed if it's not another leaf, it's not gonna be a sort of a cakey. It's actually a new growth because I know this guy is prone to do that. He didn't do it lately, but you never know.